Hey folks, Jordan with the Young Turks, TYT Politics. It is Thursday, two days after the apocalypse. Donald Trump has been elected president, and the media, predictably, has no idea why, and is in denial that it even happened. You know, I, uh, before I came to the Young Turks, I used to work at MSNBC, and before that I worked at Fox News. Uh, that's a whole other story, maybe another time I'll explain that to you. But... One of the reasons I left cable news is because I'm a very think-outside-the-box kind of guy. I'm a very uh, screw-the-echo-chamber kind of guy. And when you work in cable news, when you work in print at a newspaper, or even if you work for some of these digital websites, that is the echo chamber. And you're mostly working with and around people who live in New York, who live in Washington, D.C., who live in uh, Chicago, L.A., major urban cities that, in general, uh, people make a lot of money or make very good money above average for what average working people make. Um, when you work in cable news, when you write for the New York Times, when you write for the Washington Post, uh, whatever it is, these legacy media outlets, these corporate media outlets, they generally stick to what they call the narrative. And the Young Turks has talked about this forever. And they generally stick to one or two stories a day, pretty much about nothing. They generally speak, uh, stick to creating content that is uh, creating content on the cheap. So CNN, MSNBC, let us put Democrat A in the left box, Republican R in the right box, a uh, blonde or attractive male in the middle. And let's call it journalism as they duke it out. This has been going on for years. Meanwhile, working class people, working class white people, working class minorities have had their jobs offshored, have had, their, uh, have had to dip into their savings, have had student loan debt pile up, and essentially have had to scrape and claw just to survive. And the people in New York, the people in Washington, D.C., the people in Chicago, the people in L.A., living in their own bubble, many of them making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, many of them making millions of dollars a year. I'm talking about the people who are on Morning Joe. I'm talking about the people who are on CNN. I'm talking about the people who are on Fox News. They thought everything was doing dandy. Because they, they look at, you know, the jobs report that comes out every, uh, every first Friday of the week. Oh, we, we got 250,000 jobs. Things are moving in the right direction. Oh, we're down to 4.9% unemployment. Things are moving in the right direction. Oh, ho home equity prices are ticking up. Because they themselves have no struggle. Because they themselves are living in a bubble. And they're doing very well because they themselves listening, listen to the business people at their networks or the business people at their newspapers. They think, oh, yeah, things could be a little bit better in the country, but we're way better than we were. Yeah. Are we better than we were in 2008 when it was about to have a Great Depression? Yeah, we are. But look at what you're comparing it to. That doesn't mean the country is where it needs to be. That doesn't mean you who's watching are not struggling. You know, before I got this job, I was struggling. And I, even in this job, I've got bills that I still haven't paid off. And then you fast forward to this election. When, you know, Bernie Sanders had created a gigantic movement out of nothing. He was not known around the country. He did not take money from banks. He created it on pure message, pure passion, and pure hunger for change. And the mainstream media dismissed him. When he was talking to 10,000, 15,000 people at a time, they were showing empty podiums of Donald Trump. When polls showed Bernie Sanders up by 10 to 15 percent, 10 to 15 points beating Donald Trump as recently as May and June. Oh, you know, we shouldn't put too much stock into polls that come five or six months before an election. Oh, you know, Hillary's been running for 20 years. If Bernie were the nominee, they would dig into the closet and they'd hammer him. So we can't really look at these polls. Uh, 
oh, you know, yeah, it's mostly the, you know, hippies and NYU students at Bernie rallies. I heard that from uh, CNN anchor Carol Costello the day after a Washington, a Washington Square Park rally where Bernie had 40,000 people. You know what the CNN anchor said? Oh, it was mostly CNN anchors. Uh, excuse me, it was mostly NYU students and Occupy Wall Street members. Yeah, because you were there. And how, what a ridiculous thing she said. So they dismissed Bernie's movement because, you know what? Bernie Sanders is not convenient for people who work at the New York Times. Bernie Sanders is not convenient for anchors at CNN because, you know what? He'd raise their taxes. He'd raise their parent company's taxes. He might tighten regulations on the media, on the telecom industry. He might try to break up the, the monopoly in the media industry. He says things that are uncomfortable, like we need to elevate working class people, not the professional class, not the cocktail crowd, not the limousine liberals. Meanwhile, for the last year and a half, CNN, MSNBC, the New York Times, the Washington Post, Politico, we could go on. Donald Trump, and I say this all the time, so I'm sorry for repeating it. Ev- Donald Trump's every booger was breaking news on CNN. Donald Trump's every tweet was breaking news on CNN. Donald Trump was allowed to call in from his bed to meet the press, and this week on ABC. Meanwhile, Bernie Sanders had crowds bigger than Donald Trump. Did we talk about Bernie Sanders' policies? Did we try to explain to our audience how NAFTA, how the trade deals have decimated the industrial Midwest? By the way, the same industrial Midwest that just elected Donald Trump, which I said back in June and July when Hillary Clinton picked Tim Kaine and pretty much sent the signal, screw you, progressives, I don't need you. I said it was a good chance that Hillary Clinton was going to lose because she's abandoning progressives in search of a Republican vote, in search of courting Republicans and neocons. Which brings me to now, because in fairness, when, when in, in, in nature, when you're shocked, when something traumatic happens, when you're stunned by the course of events, it is a little difficult to deduce how it happened. For example, the other night when when I was outside Hillary Clinton's rally and her supporters were coming out in tears and shocked and stunned. It looked like they just witnessed a terrorist attack and I'm not being, I'm not trying to be funny. It literally looked like they were victims of a trauma. Uh, And I interviewed them. The video is up now on youtube.com slash TYT politics. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? 110,000 subscribers in less than a year. Um, when I interviewed them, I didn't really challenge them because I didn't want to dig on their grave, but they didn't get it either, how this happened. And you look at the mainstream media, Uh, unfortunately, I'm watching cable news, I'm reading the New York Times, stunned headlines, America elected a a bigot by Charles Blow in the New York Times. Chuck Todd, how did this happen? What did we miss? Anchor after anchor, reporter after reporter, uh, you know, uh, how, did the po- how were the polls wrong? Pundits who were all wrong this whole time come, going on. Oh, you know, it, was, it, it must have been Hillary Clinton just wasn't inspiring. Oh, it must have been that, you know, structurally, uh, they just didn't get out. The, they, didn't ju- they just didn't turn out their people because Hillary Clinton got five million less voters that Barack Obama did in 2012. Five million less. Oh, it's James Comey's fault. He, he took away from Hillary Clinton's momentum in the last week when he, you know, when he came out saying that he was uh, re, re, re-examining her, her email situation. Oh, it was WikiLeaks and those damn journalists who had the audacity to dig into Hillary Clinton and her campaign's emails, which clearly showed corruption, which clearly showed illegal activity. Humorously enough, and I'm not picking on uh, her name is Yamichi Alcindor. She's a writer for the, a reporter for the New York Times. She's actually nice. Uh, I've, I've been on the bus with her when we've covered Bernie Sanders and other things. So ni- nice reporter. 
uh, for, nothing against her. But she's on Chuck Todd yesterday, and she says, you know, I'm starting to think there might be an East Coast slant in the media, and we're, we're not getting out into the country enough talking to real people, and that's why we missed this. Ding, 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 ding. You think? You think? You know, I want to tell you a little bit behind the scenes. So uh, when I started with the Young Turks and, uh, you know, Cenk hired me and, you know, originally he, I didn't have, you know, I, I was a reporter, but I didn't have a lot of on-air experience. So he wanted to kind of support me and try to give me some suggestions and stuff. Uh, so Cenk thought, well, you know, try to interview the, the candidates' uh, advisors, try to interview, uh, you know, political, local political candidates, try to interview... Um, you know, strategist. And I said to him, yeah, yeah, you know, at the debates, I'm, you know, of course, I'll interview the advisors and all that. But I actually think, why don't we go out and talk to real people? Nobody does that. What, what a thought. What a concept. Why don't we go talk to real people? You know, let, let, let CNN and the MSNBC crowd talk about the, all the pundits. Well, the American people want this. The American people think this. These people haven't been out with the American people since, since the dawn of uh, evolution. They're too busy, you know, in the cocktail crowd in New York and D.C. So I said, let me go talk to the American people. Let me go talk to Trump supporters. Let me go talk to Bernie supporters. Let me go talk to Hillary supporters. Let me go talk just to average people. Because number one, that's how you get real news and the real stories out there. Because they're not professional liars like pundits. They're not professional talking point machines. And you know what? Not to say I'm so great, but that's, that's how I built a channel. That's how uh, I got a pulse on where this thing was going because I went out and talked to real people. So Emma and I recently, uh, I think, what, when was it? October, I think. We went on a, uh, a five-state, four-day tour through the Midwest, and I called it hashtag disappearing middle class tour, you know, borrowing a phrase from Bernie. So I went to Pennsylvania. Uh, we went to Pennsylvania. We went to Ohio. We went to Michigan. We went to Illinois. We went to Wisconsin. And I talked to the working class people of America, in many ways, the working poor people of America, the people that gravitated to Bernie Sanders, frankly, the people that gravitated to Donald Trump. These were people who are working two or three jobs, still working two or three jobs, making $10,000 less than they did 10 years ago. These were the people who have $100,000 to $200,000 in student loan debt, not just millennials, by the way, middle-aged to older folks, too. These were the people, one woman was supporting a family of four, including her disabled husband, making $140 a week. I went into Detroit, in, into the hood. And I don't say the hood as a condescending thing, like I'm a white guy saying the hood. This is how they just, the people I interviewed told me to describe it. I went into one of the most dangerous areas in all of America. I saw a whole street of nothing because the houses that used to be burned, uh, houses that used to be there were burned down to the ground by gang violence. Gang violence because Detroit has shut down 100 schools and all of, all of the youth centers. And I encourage you to go to TYT Politics. That's youtube.com slash TYT Politics. Click on playlists. Click on disappearing middle class. You could watch all these videos. I went out there because Jenk invested in us to go out there to talk to real people. And you know what? I knew going out there that a lot of these videos were not going to get 700,000 views. Just like I know a lot of the videos I do at Standing Rock are not going to get a million views because they're not sec. They're not. They're not as sexy as Bernie in the headline or, you know, negative things about Hillary in the headline. But I did it because it's the right thing to do. These are the stories. This is, these are the stories. These are the people that elected Donald Trump. And a lot of the people I interviewed did not vote for Donald Trump. But I can tell you they didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. And that's why she lost. It's not a coincidence. She lost by one point in Wisconsin. She lost by one point in Michigan. I believe she lost by one or two in Pennsylvania. Ohio, four, four points. You cannot tell me if Bernie Sanders was not the Democratic nominee. Bernie Sanders wins Wisconsin. Bernie Sanders wins Michigan. Bernie Sanders wins Ohio. Bernie Sanders wins Pennsylvania. Good chance he wins Florida, which Trump won by one point. And we're all going out, in the, out, out into the street 
streaking because it's President Bernie Sanders. So Yamichi, who again, nothing personal, just I saw it yesterday, so I had to bring it up, says maybe the, maybe the media has an East Coast slant. I think we need to get out there into, the, into rural areas and the Midwest to talk to these people. You're right. And I give you credit that you recognize that. The problem is the New York Times isn't going to send you there. The problem is CNN's not going to send people there to actually do journalism. That's not following the horse race and the, and the, and the conflict between Donald Trump and whatever pit person he's pissing on tomorrow. These outlets have no uh, interest in doing real journalism and talking to real people. And instead of creating conflict, actually talking to real people and getting real stories. Which, by the way, is why independent media, Democracy Now!, The Young Turks, Secular Talk, Lee Camp, Jimmy Dora, I could go on, is why we are rising. And it's not to brag, but there's a reason independent progressive media is rising, because we focus on these stories. We focus on it in different ways. Some of us are out there reporting. Some of us are commenting on it, whatever it is. But we're focusing on the working class. We're focusing on real people. By the way, it's not just white working class people. Bernie Sanders, towards the end of the primary, was beating Hillary Clinton among young African-American voters, among young Latino voters. So it's not just white working people. But let me tell you something. When the Democratic Party abandons white working class people in the Rust Belt in favor of, uh, you know, sexual favors to the banks and the oil companies and the pharmaceutical companies, when the elitist media abandon actual journalism for years in order to, you know, push the narrative and, and, and create professional wrestling on television. And as Bernie Sanders said, in, you know, indulge in the gossip It creates a very, very open vacuum for a salesman, a master manipulator like Donald Trump to manipulate and to win. And that's exactly what happened, folks. So you got Chuck Todd, you got New York Times, you got Washington Post. The Washington Post writes a story. I think it was yesterday. I tweeted about it today. Washington Post writes a story. Hillary Clinton lost. Bernie Sanders could have won. This was the Washington Post that literally wrote 16 negative stories about Bernie Sanders during the primary in one day. You remember that? Within 24 hours, they wrote 16 different stories negative about Bernie Sanders. This is the same Washington Post who, uh, you know, said Bernie Sanders, uh, he's not as electable. I mean, maybe, it looks like, maybe it looks like he's electable now, but they'll kill him in the general. The, the, the hubris is not the word, folks. Ignorance is not the word. Denial is not the word. You know what the word is? Arrogance. Arrogance. You know what? I know a lot of journalists. I've met a lot of journalists because I go around the country and when I'm at debates, when I'm at rallies, I'm, I'm right next to them. And I'm not a big fan of a lot of these people. I'm not going to lie. It's nothing personal, but I, think, I don't think they practice journalism. I really don't. I think they, they get paid well, and as, as such, they're happy to be simple-minded people who push news of the day and, and, and whatever the sexy narrative, narrative is. But these people were so disconnected, and when I was talking to them, and I told them, you know, I, I think you guys are like missing the story here. You know, the economy is not doing that well. People are really hurting. I mean, every, all these Midwest states, like it, a lot of them are like ghost towns when you, when you go in. Close down, close down storefronts, close down plants. And, and, and just being around a lot of the people, that are, a lot of the people are numb. They are just numb to this because they've been going through it for so long. And Paul Revere hasn't come to give him a warning. The government hasn't come to help them because it's the new economy, folks. It's the global economy. These jobs aren't, aren't, aren't coming back, they say. Well, and, yet, and you have these media outlets, by the way, who didn't give Jill Stein the time of day. I mean, I'm going to keep it real. Jill Stein had no chance. I, never told, I always told you she wasn't going to win. 
but they didn't want to cover Jill Stein because they were so arrogant to say, oh, 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 forgiving student loan debt? Give me, what a crazy idea. You can't do that. Meanwhile, the same, the same outlets, they had no problem when they were covering, you know, paying back the banks, uh, excuse me, giving $750 billion to the banks with no strings attached. Oh, these outlets say, oh, well, the banks, were paid, the banks paid it back. Yeah? Maybe my, check got cost, maybe my check got lost in the mail. Did yours? Were you paid back when your 401k was cut in half in 2008 and 9? Or you lost your house? Or you lost your job? Were you paid back? <laughs> the, bank, the, banks paid, the banks paid the government back. Like our government, which is out of touch because it's not diverse. It's mostly old white people. Our media is out of touch because it's mostly out of touch, wealthy, older people. The New York Times does not have people like me. I don't want to work for the New York Times, by the way. The Washington Post does not have people like me. Yeah, digital media has a lot of companies that are built on young people and millennials like BuzzFeed and now this news. But... The, the preeminent journalists who, the, the preeminent um, outlets that are, you know, have huge reach, uh, the people writing for them, the people in front of the camera, are people who are out of touch, are people who over the summer on the weekends are in the Hamptons in New York, bathing in money. God bless you, Anderson Cooper, but you're not exactly in touch with what real people are going, going through around the country. Same thing with Don Lemon. Same, same thing with Chris Matthews. Morning, Joe. Give me a break. So this isn't like to just go on a rant for, for fun and to say I'm, I'm better than you guys and I, and, uh, you know, you should bow down to me. No. This is to say that it's, it's discouraging and upsetting when you created this monster that is Donald Trump And now, after he won and defeated the candidate that I, that most of you, that jank, that progressives, that mathematics told you was going to lose, oh my God, how did this happen? How did this happen? I don't get it. How is the polling so wrong? I don't get it. I thought, you know, I thought the demograph- demographics were in the Democrats' corner forever. I mean, she had the Obama coalition. Trump had no message. Trump had no policies. It happened because none of you have gotten out into the country and talked to actual people. None of you have, other than your little photo op for a, few, for a week in Flint, none of you have gone back to Flint. I did. None of you have gone into East Chicago, Indiana, where there's a lead poisoning crisis. I did. Very few legacy and corporate media outlets have been to Standing Rock. I've been there three times. And again, it's not like to brag about me, because Amy Goodman has been there, and other independent journalists have been to all the places I'm talking about. The outlets that are supposed to be leading the way for truth are leading the way for substanceless drivel. So when I hear, uh, you know, a New York Times reporter say, oh, maybe there's an East Coast slant to things. Maybe we need to get out there. When I see a headline from the Washington Post, Hillary lost, Bernie could have won. When I see CNN anchor after CNN anchor say, how did this happen? It's making me insane. It's making me insane. So, what now? Uh, What now is onward. I'm going to keep doing the videos I do for TYT Politics. Uh, I will keep getting out into the field for the Young Turks. Cenk and I will meet next week. Uh, I will keep informing you of cable news and print media stupidity so you don't have to watch it or read it. I'm happy to do that for you. Hopefully, TYT Politics will expand. Part of that is you. I can't get 
more reporters. I can't get a producer. I can't get more money to go around the country if there's not more subscribers, if there's not more views. I need you for that. There's only so much I could do. No, Craig, I'm not on Suicide Watch. I'm, I'm just doing fine. <laughs> but thank you. You guys are the ones who lift me. You guys are the ones who lift the channel. So, uh, you know, if you haven't subscribed, I, I, I very much ask you to subscribe. I very much ask your friends, your family, show them. I'm no Walter Cronkite. I'm no God. I'm just keeping it real. That's what I try to do. And I'm trying to get some help, some other reporters, so we could create more videos. So we could go to other lead crises, to other pipeline crises, to other uh, areas where people are being screwed and where progressives are being screwed. And we're going to need extra people because Donald Trump is president and I'm ready to fight him. Don't think because I didn't cover him 24-7 like the rest of the media means that I don't see what a danger this man is. I see it. And I'm, I am here and I'm taking him on. And the Young Turks is taking him on. But we need you. So you can't just press, put your money where your mouth is. Press subscribe. Become a member to the Young Turks because more membership to the Young Turks means more funds for reporting for TYT politics and elsewhere. Can't just say you wanna, we need to create change. You've got to be part of that change. And I would love help. I've been working seven days a week for seven, uh, for, since January. I would love to take a day off and have some other reporters and producers and cameramen and editors. So this isn't like a naked uh, promotional video for TYT, but if you want to see, if you want to see more, if you want to see us topple CNN, MSNBC, the New York Times, and in and three years and five years, make them yesterday's news, which they already are. It's in your hands. Thank you for watching youtube.com slash TYT politics. I have a few videos up already from election night. Uh, my thoughts after election night, Eric was at Trump's headquarters. Emma just did a pretty long uh, video today. You should check that out. Uh, of course, we're putting up more videos from my time at Standing Rock. If you want to watch the whole playlist of videos from Standing Rock, uh, click on playlists and uh, there's a Standing Rock. I think it's Native Americans fight the Dakota Access Pipeline. We have over 50 videos up from Standing Rock. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.